Ukraine is collapsing. Russia is winning on all fronts of the war. Sanctions are being completely bypassed by India and China. The time to short energy is approaching very soon. I'm already doing it in my personal account. We're getting ready to pull the trigger for portfolio builder as soon as it's uh, pretty much a done deal. So get ready to front run Putin declaring victory and reversal of sanctions. Here's just a look at the day over day uh, changes. This is uh, military intelligence, um, but basically it's starting to move pretty quickly. Uh, now I'm not going to try to pronounce all these different city names, uh, but the circled spots are new territories that have been taken over by Russia since yesterday. I'm following this on a daily basis. Uh, and Ukraine's going into retreat defense mode as they're becoming encircled here. Um, there's going to be one big massive fight on a bridgehead named Tanesk, and I think that's going to be the, the hardest part of the war coming up. Uh, here's another map at it. Uh, here's another territory that was taken in the last day. Um, so as we look at this, uh, this is what's happening. So Ukraine has this middle area secured with lots of food. Uh, but Russia is slowly but surely surrounding them. Uh, so I don't think it'll be too much longer before Donbass falls. And then the big question, does Putin call it a victory and start to reverse sanctions or is he greedy and keep this war chugging along? That's really the, the big question I have. Uh, so that's what's developing right now. Uh, just a few more maps to give you a feel for what's happening. Essentially the bulk of the Ukrainian army is being encircled currently. So trade alert, get ready to short energy as Ukraine, Russia ceasefire is on the horizon. I would say probably July at this point. I'm not so sure uh, it's gonna happen by June, but we're watching carefully. The war and sanctions have backfired. The way you beat Putin is get the cost of oil down and ramp up oil production in the US. Instead, we've made his profitability go skyrocketing, wiped out uh, trillions of dollars of markets globally. And now we're seeing an insane pressure on politicians. Boris Johnson's on his way out in the UK from supporting this. Uh, we already have France and Germany really not so fond of all these sanctions. So, uh, and meanwhile, India and uh, China are enjoying cheap oil compared to the rest of the world. Here's the ruble keeps going up in value. And again, their, uh, their exports are and total revenue is, is just kicking butt for the Russians. So this just really has backfired. And as we approach winter for Europe and midterms for the US, uh, the inflation is going to kill politicians. They must end the war before winter and I think much sooner. Uh, so that's the, the big picture I've been focusing on. And it's crazy, a little war, perhaps a big war, uh, could turn into a big war. Uh, in Europe is affecting the entire global financial system. And it's holding back our favorite asset, which are tech stocks, specifically Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum just switched to proof of stake on a test net today successfully from proof of work. So exciting things developing. Uh, we could be exiting summer with a super bullish setup for energy to fall and for bond yields, tech stocks and cryptocurrencies to get the bid leading into midterms. Uh, but we got to be patient to enter the trade. Uh, Europe and USA are still putting up a big bluff. Uh, Biden had a, a little piece he put out saying we're going to keep the pressure on indefinitely. Europe's on its seventh and now looking at its eighth round of sanctions that continue to fail. Uh, some long range military equipment's going in there. It doesn't seem like enough to change the tide of the war. Um, and we don't know if Putin's gonna declare victory once he takes Donbass. He might just keep marching along if the West doesn't play ball with reversing sanctions. So the big money is betting energy drops. The hard part as always is timing. So we pulled a 305% profit on boil betting natural gas would go up during the war. And now we're gonna make you yeah, hopefully a similar return. Probably not that big. I'd be happy with 150 to 200% return betting it's gonna come back down to uh, relatively lower levels. I'm not saying it's going back to pre-lockdown levels or Trump era levels, nowhere near that, probably twice that high, but not these ridiculous levels we're currently at. Top selling advisories up 23% year to date. 
we've given up some of the profits. We're about half in cash, ready to pounce on the next big trade. Uh, last year, it returned 233% uh, with a very similar setup. So let's talk about how to get rich in 2022 following our $10,000 trading plan. Uh, we're currently not offering free trials, so this is only for paid members watching this. Uh, but here's what the $10,000 portfolio looks like. You have 69 shares of crash insurance, UVXY, 146 shares of treasuries at 18%. And then we have 172 shares of the Grayscale Trust, ETHE, which holds Ethereum. Uh, and again, we're looking at about 20% long Ethereum, 20% long Treasuries, 10% long the VIX. And so we'll look at what each of these does. UVXY goes up when put options go up faster than call options on the S&P 500, which typically happens when you have a panic mode. With interest rates at this level, we're at a risk of more pain in markets. So if the energy costs go up and the war really escalates and there's no diplomacy, there's still a risk of more bond market pain. And I believe if it goes any higher, it will create a collapse in the stock market. So far, uh, the markets have absorbed the bond market crash very handsomely in my opinion, especially assets like Bitcoin, if you told me bonds were going to crash to this level in six months, uh, last November, I would have predicted Bitcoin to be at 10,000. It's at 30,000. We got major hedge funds uh, that were making tons of money with high frequency trading, getting out of the stock market due to new SEC regulations. And they're heading over to cryptocurrencies where there's no regulations. So just a lot of bullish uh, movement heading into the crypto space. Now, if we're going to have a big stock crash, we're going to get limit down days. We want to own UVXY, especially if the cause of the crash is inflation, because that could make bonds a lame duck and not perform how they should in a violent stock market crash. So UVXY is our favorite asset to do that. If you bought it in 2020, in February, a 10% position completely protected your portfolio because it went up 1,100%. It's been bobbling up and down all year. We haven't touched it. It's the, uh, it's the policy you only touch when there's dramatic violence in your portfolio to the downside. So we want to hold that and not play around with it and try to just take little profits here and there. Step two, big picture, 100% certainty at the end of the day, treasury yields must go lower so corporations and governments globally can expand debt. So unless we really think the inflation is not going to go away, and all the data is pointing to, it's not just falling, it's crashing outside of energy and wage pressure, uh, but we're starting to see layoffs. We're seeing every sign out there that deflation's coming in. The only thing holding it back is this sticky energy. Uh, that means bond yields are gonna go way, way lower. So we're very bullish on treasuries, but we have to, to give you that warning. If energy spikes, if oil goes to 150, 180, 200, and things go out of control, there could be more pain in the bond market before we ultimately hit these lower yields. I believe we'll see a, a lower dollar value around 90 on DXY and interest rates uh, probably back to that 1% range on the 30 year within two years. So that's about how long I would expect to hold this. Now, this is the US long bond trend over the last four decades. And so again, the only time it's broke the paradigm was through the 70s when there was uncontrollable inflation. And that was driven by a lot of different mechanisms that just don't exist today. I'm highly confident the trend in bonds will continue. Uh, we may very well break that low of 1% on the 30 year uh, and that we could be seeing that in about two years. So that'll be the time to pull profits on crypto and to look at a reversal in, in the way we look at markets. Uh, so it's going to sit here sticky and then it's going to crash to lower yields. It could be for good cause if energy is going down. It could be for very bad reasons if energy is going up because uh, it would break the economy. Here's a look at TMF uh, and just a beautiful chart. So if we get back to those highs of 2020, you're going to rip TMF from 1250 to above 50 bucks. So just massive, massive gains. My personal portfolio is loading up on these exact assets I'm uh, highlighting for you guys just as aggressive as possible because they have such a long time horizon. Okay, here's a look at the same product, but 
not leverage TLT uh, below 110, and you're going to crash things. You're going to crash the stock market. Specifically, you're going to crash tech stocks and probably cryptocurrencies. So we're at a very, very vulnerable level here that I think is extremely unlikely to go lower unless you push oil to 150, 180 range. I think that would do the trick right now to truly piss off the bond market. Uh, the two year is telling us how many rate hikes to expect and what time frame. So uh, what's crazy is the two years gone up faster than it went down in that big crash uh, that was designed by the Federal Reserve uh, tightening from 2016 to 2019 which eventually caused them to stop tightening, lower rates to zero, and start printing trillions of dollars uh, as we went into the lockdown uh, year. So this is showing us we're probably going to get 50 basis point rate hike in the June meeting, July meeting. That's caked into the bond market. After that, it should drop down to 25 basis points in September. Uh, and I think the market's going to be very happy with that. We're about probably at the top of the, the curve after... Uh, perhaps a couple more 25 basis point rate hikes. So as long as the Fed does that, bonds should start to get a bid and be very happy. Now we're going to need the CPI to fall, which comes out Friday uh, and is once a month print. We're seeing the uh, all bond markets start to sell off. This means yields are falling. This is good news. This is what we're predicting. This chart, we're looking at the commodity index and you can see it just doesn't stay at these levels for very long. Uh, so the, the risk to reward to bet up is not good. The risk to reward to bet down is amazing. Could we have a little pain uh, if it shoots up a little higher? Sure. But that in itself will create demand destruction and crash this lower. Um, so also the blue lines are where the Fed has done tightening. We can see with 100% track record, uh, almost immediately, the commodities stopped going up. So financial tightening is designed to get these commodity prices down to get a hold of inflation and commodities drive inflation. Uh, this is looking at the rate of change of the crash in the 10 year bond yield. And it's just never been seen before in history. This is an extremely rare move. I was predicting we would hit this yield in two years. It happened in six months. This caught everybody off guard. Uh, everyone I know did not understand that the inflation is going to be this bad and that the bond market would react that quickly. Uh, but that's behind us now. We want to look for the opposite play moving forward. Uh, so again, this is the longest bond crash in history and the greatest decline. So time to buy the dip. Uh, we just had Target come out with too much inventory, too little demand. They're getting ready to discount and get this stuff out of Target. Walmart had the same thing. Uh, we got strippers saying they're there's nobody in the club. We've got uh, T-Mobile uh, type of retail spot saying it's dead. The mall is slowing down dramatically. Uh, so definitely the economy is moving its money into different parts. Uh, but for sure, almost everything outside of energy is falling. If we look at PMIs, uh, we see China, Germany, South Korea's PMIs have all crashed. This was uh, old news. The U.S. is following behind. This predicts yields go lower. Uh, this is overlaying China with a six month delay. Now China's PMIs are starting to pick back up. So that's good, assuming we don't wanna head into a great depression here. Uh, but China shows that the US PMIs are highly likely to be falling deflation. If we, look, if we look at the heat map of inflation, it's just energy. Everything is cooling off. So red is hot, uh, blue is negative and uh, White is just normal. So that's what's happening. Everything's cooling off except for energy. Look at jet fuel prices. They've been this level before in 2008. Didn't last long. Crashed epically uh, from 400 down to 100. Now we ended up with a stock crash in that one. So hopefully we avoid that. I'm not predicting a recession right now. We are at record levels in oil in euros and pounds, not in the US. So the US does produce a lot of energy. And so we've actually seen the dollar going up with energy. That's why we can say if energy goes down, likely you're going to see the value of the dollar go down, bond yields go down, tech stocks, cryptocurrencies skyrocket, uh, which is where we want to make our big money, uh, probably for the next two-year stunt. Export and import prices. This is from Jeffrey Gunlack's webcast, uh, which was yesterday. He does one about every quarter. 
pretty much saying the same thing I'm saying. He's actually expecting DXY to hit 70 over a decade. If you give me a DXY of 70, I'm going to tell you Bitcoin breaks a million dollars a coin. I know a lot of us are fans of that space. This is another interesting chart. It shows you what happens when the value of commodities relative to the stock market gets too expensive. Spoiler alert, it crashes the economy. So it's absolutely critical to get energy costs down. Otherwise, the whole financial system is going to crash. And that's what scares me. Putin knows this. That's why I'm not so sure he's going to stop after Donbass. Step three is to pick up our Ethereum, E-T-H-E, Grayscale Trust. And we can see this chart here. It's trading at a big discount to the assets it holds. It's the safest way to grab up Ethereum. Uh, here's a chart of the real Ethereum. And if you bought and held through the 2018 run-up and then subsequent crash in bear market and just didn't care about it, didn't have too much of your portfolio in it, uh, you're up 12,000% today. So that gives people a lot of faith who've been holding through this six-month bear market we're currently in. Uh, there's big short positions in Bitcoin futures and the NASDAQ. This can be short squeezed. The catalyst will be once again getting these bloody energy costs to fall. Uh, this chart compares the S&P 500, which has heavier positioning in uh, banks and energy to the NASDAQ. So growth versus value. And when they get to this, this trend line, you typically get a reversal. So I'm very, very confident we are weeks, if not days, away from a very explosive reversal where value underperforms growth. Uh, here's a look at Bitcoin returns, uh, just again to give us some more faith in our core position in Ethereum for the high-risk portfolio. Uh, okay, so what else is happening? Japan is printing like crazy. The Turkish lira is now devaluing slower than the Japanese yen. So look at this, the purchasing power is down 16%. That's because they are uh, not gonna let those yields rise in Japan. So they're willing to buy up unlimited amounts of their debt and keep those yields from rising. So Japan certainly wants these energy costs to go down. Uh, China needs to hit a 5.5% GDP target this year. And they consume more commodities than anybody in the world by far. So they also want these energy costs to go down. They've been having to print money and it's causing their currency to devalue. Now, both of those countries are importers of guess what commodities. So that's why their currencies are getting double whammied right now. The dollar will fall as the Fed, uh, let me switch to this. The dollar is going to fall here as energy costs go down. That's our expectation. The bond market's gonna get a huge rally and tech stocks are gonna get a huge rally as the Fed starts to soften its hawkish rhetoric and we actually see CPI fall. Those are my two uh, forecasts here to get the dollar down and tech and crypto up. So hold on to your horses. Don't start to short these yet. Uh, Boyle hit 134 today, went all the way down to I think 110, back to 115. So we're starting to see some weakness in natural gas. KOLD is the way to short that one. Um, it may be a little late to, to get a huge win on that by the time I pull the trigger. Uh, I've personally already entered a position in that. It's risky, it could go way against me. That's why I haven't put it into our portfolio. I don't have enough confidence to broadcast this to everyone's portfolio. Uh, the more surefire one will probably be, and the one that might react a little slower uh, is the oil market with NRGU. We go to NRGD will be the short position on that. So here's a look at Boyle starting to top out here, potentially ready for a pretty good sell-off. Uh, and then NRGU keeps going to new highs. So this one with NRGD might be a better bet uh, because the whole world wants that oil to go down as soon as Putin stops attacking. Uh, so that may be the one we actually pull the trigger on. Here's a look at oil. Again, it can go to these levels, but it can't stay there for long. Now the new normal may be a lot higher. If you look two years into the future, of oil future contracts, they're still pricing about $70 oil. So uh, we could be looking at a collapse to that $70 range. I would be shocked if it goes below uh, 50 and I'll probably start buying NRGU as we approach 90. I'm not so sure we go below 90.
Uh, why are we at war? The expansion of NATO. Russia's getting scared of uh, losing their, their country. Uh, so the second this conflict ends, go long, leverage tech, short the energy, and that's our two big plays coming up. We're going to be very patient because uh, this war is going slower than everybody thought, and it's not clear when exactly Putin will declare victory. By the time he does, oil's already going to be tanking. So I'm going to try to front run that for you, uh, but I don't think the time to do it is just yet, probably a couple more weeks out. Now, big picture. Uh, forgetting about the war, the last time the U.S. tightened financial conditions while China was printing money to bail out their real estate market was in 2015, led to a massive gain in Bitcoin going up 4,400%. Uh, during summer, expect to have a webinar every Wednesday. I might throw on Friday as well after the CPI data. Uh, but we may just have to wait. The main catalyst here is to see Donbass fall and to predict when Putin's going to start negotiating peace. And that's when we want to pull the trigger. Now, if you're watching this replay on YouTube, call Dean so you don't miss the trade alerts, 505-322-7515. I'm going to jump into my charts. So here we're looking at interest rates starting to stabilize here, uh, which is very good. If the inflation print on Friday is too hot, or oil goes to 150 or higher. Uh, I do think we could see this break to another level, uh, which would be devastating for markets. So we're gonna keep a close eye on that. And we'll talk about what I expect uh, inflation to do on the CPI this Friday. Uh, but I do think it will fall, uh, at least the one we're looking at, which excludes, of course, food and energy. Here's that TLT chart, uh, same story. Below 110 is problematic. Below 105, you've got you've got huge problems for financial markets. Uh, we're starting to see the 30-year mortgage top out and fall. Uh, so everything's really doing what we're expecting. We're not seeing a steepening of the yield curve on the two and 10-year, which would be predictive of a recession. So that's good. The probability of a surprise of a 75 basis point rate hike is essentially uh, not likely at 7%. So that would be another risk factor. Uh, the VIX is getting crushed. This is good for stocks. This should help get a melt up in stocks here. Most likely, we just need a good CPI print Friday. As the front end of interest rates are forced higher due to the Fed raising rates, we're going to see about $2 trillion flow out of the Fed's piggy bank into the real market. Uh, this could also be a very bullish event coming up as they hike rates. China's back online. The gold copper ratio is now predicting higher yields. Uh, over this time frame. So that's not good for our prediction. If I zoom out to here, though, where we had this huge jump in copper futures, gold's holding its weight, and the more short-term data over the last three days is predicting lower yields. And we did get that big uh, drop this early this week on Monday on the bond market. So I think that's been priced in. Here's the products we're interested in shorting. Boil with cold, K-O-L-D, N-R-G-U with N-R-G-T. D. Timing wise, got to wait, maybe another week or two. Things are starting to move a little faster on the, the war front, though. Lumber futures are shouting and screaming lower oil ahead. Last summer, it predicted lower oil and it nailed it. It also predicted higher oil and bottomed out right here and started rising rapidly. So this is a great indicator of inflation uh, via the housing market, the biggest market in the world. Here's a look at DXY topping out here uh, as energy starting to top out. So this is all the, the right signs we're wanting to see. A little patience is going to go a long way. This is the yen and the yuan uh, devaluing due to printing money and having to import energy in China and Japan. Now, I've added a few other cryptocurrencies to our chart. Uh, if you're following the high risk portfolio, you're going to have exposure to ETHE with the Grayscale Trust. If you call Dean, ask him about our private equity fund. It's only available to paid members who have an established relationship with our company. We're now expanding into the nine top cryptocurrencies that thrive in the Ethereum ecosystem. So we've got AXS, Sand, Mana. Uh, we're not in Bitcoin. We have Ethereum, Polygon, and Aave, as well as Uniswap. 
So we're expanding the portfolio to some extremely aggressive coins. As you know, uh, Polygon dramatically has outperformed Ethereum in bull markets, uh, but Axis Affinity, Sandbox, and Decentraland have outperformed Polygon by many, many more magnitudes. So we're getting ready to get extremely aggressive and outperform Ethereum. And this can replace your ETHE position uh, in the high-risk portfolio. In the safe growth portfolio, it can replace your Bitcoin position. Uh, this chart, we're looking at uh, interest rates in yellow, the banks in this pink line, FAS and NRGU. And for a while, banks were going down with interest rates rising. This was very concerning. Now we're starting to see that relationship fix. So this is good news uh, for the financial system. This chart, we're looking at emerging markets compared to the S&P 500. And finally, emerging markets starting to outperform. EEM is going to skyrocket with a weak dollar. Um, so that outperformance could be very close. Jeffrey Gunlack predicting uh, up to a 10 to 1 outperformance in emerging markets over this decade relative to the S&P 500. And if we look at some of the uh, best stocks, Alibaba, Tencent, uh, you can see just massive gains in the last few days. So it looks like China's getting ready to uh, make their markets go up. Uh, Europe's trading at a great discount. Uh, but the inflation in Germany is awful to save credibility. They're going to have to tighten uh, interest rates, which is tough uh, because it's su supply side destruction due to the war. And it's not so uh, obvious that raising the cost of money will fix supply side issues in your economy. Uh, but this does remain a cheap index that we have exposure to for safe growth with a small position. Long term, we're very bullish in the revolution out of oil based energy into cleaner energy uh, over the coming decades. And so if you believe in that and climate change, you want to be long rare earth metals, REMX and uranium. China is making massive amounts of nuclear power plants right now and is also the main producer of rare earth metals. So another weak dollar China play. Uh, or emerging markets plays REMX and uranium, which we have positioned in the safe growth portfolio. We're not in gold or silver right now because uh, I still see massive labor shortage. Uh, and so I still think the, the recovery in the jobs market is not over yet, not seeing a recession currently either. So we're not playing the stagflation play just yet with gold or silver. We're comparing it to the TLT and you can see it's gone down with bonds and up with bonds. So we'd rather just have Ethereum. Here's the core inflation rate, uh, which did fall month over month. I'm expecting it to drop to six, maybe 5.9. Anything lower than that, the market's gonna really love. Uh, and again, this does strip out food and energy. So we gotta realize that bias in this core inflation print. So this will come out Friday. As long as it's going down, I think the bond market's gonna be quite happy. The more it goes down, the better. Uh, payrolls have slowed down dramatically. That's good because we don't want the Fed to freak out about inflation and tighten too much. So these are perhaps Goldilocks jobs prints. Um, so that's once again, uh, good news for, uh, for the bond market to not have too many jobs coming online, but to not have it negative. Also good for the bond market is labor force participation rate has flatlined. So that's good. Uh, if we look at the decade of inflation, the most notable trend was we, we dropped the gold standard we, and then we, we had labor force go skyrocketing up. Okay, but that's because we were building all our own stuff. And then the politicians decided we should, or corporations uh, with the politicians decided to start outsourcing everything. And so we've been on a constant decline ever since with labor force, uh, which is one reason to, to not believe we're gonna have a decade of inflation here. Uh, banks keep loaning money. That's growing rapidly. Consumer is borrowing lots of money. Uh, so some would argue that means they're running out of savings. But if we look at money markets, there's two and a half trillion dollars in money markets. That's what you're seeing in that reverse repo. That's mostly money markets. So there's a ton of cash on the sideline. Sure, the, the poor spectrum of the population is borrowing, but this is all leading to good numbers for corporations. Retail sales slowing down but still growing. Again, great for tech, for bonds. If we look at the total revenue of consumer spending, a new high. 
So we're just not seeing this collapse in the economy to predict a stock crash or recession right now. Uh, this is the balance of trade. So we still imported more than we exported. That's cooled off a bit. Also good for predicting lower inflation ahead. Housing sales slowing down, but not crashing. If I zoom out at this level, uh, you could see this is still a lot of houses being sold. Inventory is very tight. So even though we're seeing a slowdown, I expect this to bottom out uh, and stabilize here. We'll see how low it goes. Mortgage applications are certainly down. China's PMI, which was crashing and leads our PMI by six months, is now rebounding. And we're seeing a rebound in their exports and imports. So overall, I see very little positioning uh, to change in the way we're looking at markets. Just a little patience uh, for this all to play out. Here's a review of the last time we tried to tighten conditions. It began in 2016 uh, of raising rates all the way to 2018. Then they started to sell bonds called quantitative tightening. And interest rates went up into 2018 and started crashing first Bitcoin. Uh, then it crashed emerging markets, European markets. And by the end of the year, it actually crashed the tech market, uh, the tech stocks. And that's when they had to start printing money and lower rates again. And perhaps this was all planned to lead into the lockdowns of 2020, if you want to believe in conspiracy theories. Uh, who knows? But the bottom line is they grew the balance sheet from $4 trillion to $9 trillion. So now they're planning to do the same thing. Uh, but what we care about is what's going to happen with interest rates. And we believe, again, we're at peak interest rates unless energy costs go higher when we look at the big picture. Take a look at my news feed for anything juicy. Uh, there's a ton of content here. I'm not going to read it all. Uh, there's a new crypto regulation document put out. Uh, main thing, it looks good. They're going to regulate stable coins, which could be painful for Tether. Uh, but it's good overall for the industry. Uh, this is going to get pushed back and forth between a lot of people. So it's not final. Overall, I believe it's good and it's going to cause uh, large institutions to invest in this space. Uh, today, Wall Street's regulators uh, announced a rule change, uh, which is essentially bad for some of these massive hedge funds that were front running companies like um, Robinhood. So Robinhood was selling its trading flows to big hedge funds who were making a lot of money off of that. And that same fund, Citadel, is now moving into crypto. So expect a lot more volatility, a lot more volume, and probably better prices in the long term as we have the big boys now jumping into crypto. Let's see if there's anything special. Uh, Blockworks says in the last 24 hours, crypto bill arrives at Congress. PayPal allows transfers of crypto uh, out of PayPal. Previously was not. Uh, UK government to begin testing blockchain tech, Citadel, Fidelity, Schwab to have crypto trading platforms. That's huge. Some of the biggest players in the world right there. Citadel and Virtue moving to dominate crypto trading means two things. Greater volatility, initial period when price action draws in fresh cohort of retail traders. Expect substantial initial gains from Zero Hedge. Despite a 50% rise in U.S. gasoline prices and 88% in the EU, there's likely another leg higher due to a lack of global refining capacity. So it's now it's not just the, the raw material, it's the ability to refine it that's slowing everything down. Now, I got to say, the futures markets are what's really driving these costs up with speculation. So I do still believe a ceasefire would crash commodity prices quite quickly, uh, despite uh, the, the structural problems we have in this space. And long-term, I wanna get us back into this, this play uh, as I do see this being a longer-term uh, commodity cycle. Paul Pelosi's uh, DWI charges have been dropped and they loaded up $2 million in call options on tech stocks right at the bottom. So we'll see if they called it. Now, to be fair, they were buying the same stocks, similar stocks with call options uh, in January and of course lost all their money on that. So uh, they, people get all furious when she makes money but realize she was calling for it to go up at the start of the year as well.
here's four big indicators uh, to predict recession, which are all going up. We got employment going up, uh, real sales going up, real income going up, and industrial production. So this is not produ predicting a recession there. Uh, Goldman says we won't have demand destruction on oil until it hits 160. Uh, target drop big, too much inventory, slow down in demand. They're getting ready to drop prices and get rid of this. There's some long range uh, weaponry going to Ukraine, not enough. So far, it's just day by day, uh, things get worse and worse. So there's been zero uh, successes in the last, since I've been watching this on a daily basis for Ukraine. Okay, very good. So let's take a quick look at the track record, then we'll do Q&A and uh, talk about our trade alerts. So in the safe growth portfolio, we're down 12% using leveraged products. We did not predict such a vicious bond crash or we could be doing better. I believe the bond crash is over. And basically we wanna get more aggressive with the way we're looking at markets. We're gonna short energy and then buy tech. And that's the big one, two play coming up. Uh, and probably add to our bonds. Uh, high risk portfolio is at 23% return today. Uh, over the last two months, from the start of the month to the current date, we're having an 11% drawdown. Uh, same story, we hedged the bond crash with energy very aggressively, uh, more so because of the war developing. And that's why we made a lot of money in this portfolio. Same theory, we're gonna put that cash to work to short energy and go long tech, we'll add to ETHE as well. That's the same one, two combo punch. And I'm happy to sit on our cash position and exactly how we're positioned uh, until we get either extreme energy costs that will break the markets, which would be oil going above 150, or once we get pretty good confidence that there's gonna be a ceasefire, which I might start to build a position if Donbass falls, especially the Tenesk bridgehead that Ukraine is using uh, to really hold that little chunk of land where they have most of their troops. So that's the way we're looking at the markets and we're gonna go ahead and do Q and A now. Okay, Steven says, does Jason think Russia will have to expand uh, to more? Yeah, there's, I think there's like five countries that they're most likely gonna try to take in the next decade. I believe that if they do a ceasefire, it will be short term to rebuild their military and that the war is not going to be over, which is why the West may not agree to a ceasefire, uh, except for the political pressure. Uh, but yeah, they, they want to really expand their border. Uh, Peter Zahan has a lot of great content on exactly where he thinks this is going to take place. And he, unfortunately, he does think they'll be successful in it. Harry says, what about the price of coal? Will it go higher or the same as oil with downward? Um, yeah, I'm looking at the, the products that Russia supplies to make us money. So oil and natural gas, the only two I'm focusing on here. Armin says California water and farming issues are made. Yeah, we're having bad, bad problems with food globally. Uh, and what's problematic, Ukraine put bombs all over their ports. So we couldn't get the food out of Ukraine, even if we wanted to anytime soon. Okay, Armin says if the market crashed 75%, you had 12 to 14% UVXY, would you make 2000%? You would probably make like 5,000% if that happened, Armand. Um, now, uh, the US comes in solvent with the, probably at a $3,500 SPY. So we would see the Fed buy stocks and print trillions with SPY way before it got anywhere near that. So 3,500 SPY, we wanna buy the dip and sell UVXY. Uh, but I don't see it. I, the consumer's still red hot. Uh, yeah, Mary wants to watch the YouTube channel. Uh, so it's about a 20 minute video daily. It's called Military Summary. 
and I'll add the link uh, to the next update. But if you go to YouTube, type in military summary. And uh, he's, I think he's pro-Ukraine, but he's very fair with his analysis. And um, yeah, it's good content. We were just watching it. It's a 20 minute video once a day. I had 800 people live. The reason why I was five minutes late to start today is uh, he started an hour later than usual for the live stream. There's 850 people watching it. So just a free channel that's grown in popularity. Uh, so yeah, once again, that is Military Summary is the YouTube channel name and it's free. Yao says, why aren't we buying F and GU yet? Uh, we will. First, we're going to short energy. Then we're going to rotate into F and GU. I think make a quicker buck shorting oil. Uh, more money to be made shorting oil than there is on F and GU in a very short time. I think oils, oil will reprice very, very, very rapidly. So we could be looking at doubling our money in a week or less. Uh, the time frame to hit that is going to be short. Uh, the, the rebuilding of the share value of the top 12 tech companies with FNG is going to probably last like two years. So, so we want to make a big profit shorting oil and then a slow, steady profit being long Bitcoin, Ethereum, FNG, or the triple Q. Uh, yeah, I, I bought cold a couple days ago. It was going against me today. It went up a little bit. Uh, it's dangerous. I wouldn't recommend anybody do it. Uh, right now, uh, Ashok saying drip or NRGD, probably NRGD, just because I know the product so much better. Uh, you know who's in that company, in the in that basket uh, exactly. I'll look at drip too though. Ashok saying, do I see risk in the leveraged products? No, I don't, beyond the, the underlying asset falling in value. Uh, but what I think you're saying is could the product itself implode because of the leverage? Um, and I think you're specifically saying, can we have a risk shorting uh, perhaps NRGU with NRGD? No, I think it'll work out just fine. Uh, the product that did blow up was a inverse VIX product. And when the VIX spiked, that product imploded. Uh, yeah, Rock, you got the right one. NRGD is the inverse of NRGU. Uh, EC says, with the election coming up, what do you see Joe Biden doing to make the market? So yeah, they're going to try to, well, they need to get inflation down. So the bond market sells, uh, it's a bid and that'll make stocks go up. They have the two and a half trillion dollars sitting in the reverse repo to flood the market. So as, as the Fed does hike these rates, I do expect that money to, to flood into the, the short end of the bond market from the money markets. That should be a good bump for the markets. Janet has 800 billion bucks uh, that, that she's raised. So they're not even having to sell much debt now. Uh, they're probably gonna, tr maybe they'll try to come up with uh, an inflation stimulus check to help you with your energy and food costs. I could see that being bipartisan maybe. Uh, as far as shenanigans, maybe the gun, obviously the gun is gonna be a big, uh, they're definitely using that for, for some sort. But yeah, the, the topics the voters are worried about uh, is mostly the inflation. They've got to get the inflation down. Uh, Yao says, should you still be buying? Yeah, follow the trading plan at all times. Absolutely. So if it's on the trading plan, uh, it means you should buy it. All right, guys. Well, very good. So we'll uh, we'll have the CPI print Friday, and 
Uh, until I see Donbass fall, I just don't see us having the rationale to short NRGD. So if you watch that uh, that YouTube channel daily, or I'll be doing it obviously for you. Uh, as soon as Donbass falls, I'll want to start to build the position. Um, I'm just not so sure if Putin's going to uh, stop after Donbass or if he's going to continue. Now, I'm not so sure if the West is going to immediately be willing to reverse sanctions. Uh, by winter, absolutely, they have to. Uh, they either have to beat Russia on the ground, which is just not happening, or they need to reverse these sanctions before winter, uh, well before it, so that the inflation is not uh, on the minds of, of all the voters. So it could be as late as July, August that we start to short energy, maybe sooner. Uh, the war has been moving in Russia's favor faster and faster. Uh, but it looks like they're getting to a point where they're gonna have to fight them up a, a hill at a major disadvantage. So we'll see if that can slow it down. It, it just may. Uh, but yeah, that video is really good. He does a great job of really giving you a fair view of what's happening. Uh, from from the reports from both uh, Russia and Ukraine as well. Okay, guys. Well, we'll see you on the next webinar. Thank you for joining us live. And uh, if you want to replace your ETHE or your GBTC position with an extremely aggressive leverage play, uh, talk to Dean. Call him at 505-322-7515. Ask him about our private equity fund. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you back on the next webinar.